Hello folks, welcome back to another episode of Devotees of Jesus. This is your host Julian Phillips. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom the love of God commits me right here. Thank you this day for being right by my side, to light to God, to rule and guide. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 to 20. As for the eleven disciples, they went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw Jesus, they bowed before him, although some doubted. Then Jesus approached them and said, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples from all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to fulfill all I have commanded you. I am with you always until the end of this world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, one of the things that we see in militaries throughout the world is that there are moments, either in peacetime or in wartime, where units within the military are on a mission. So, one spectacular mission that comes to mind is the raid on Entebbe. An airliner in the 1970s with a sizable number of Israeli citizens is hijacked somewhere in the Mediterranean, I can't recall where, goes to Libya and then goes all the way to Uganda. And the Israeli military pulls off a brilliant operation to very secretly fly to Uganda liberate the hostages and bring them back home. There were virtually no fatalities and the world was in awe that Israel, such a small country, could pull off such a feat. A major part of this mission's success was secrecy. A major part of this mission's success was silence. A major part of this mission's success was the operatives remaining unseen and in disguise. Jesus' mission is quite different. Jesus' mission, so here why why I went off on that tangent on mission, because here we see the Great Commission, this four-part instruction that the followers of Christ are to one, go, Two, make disciples of all nations. Three, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit. And four, teach them to fulfill all that Jesus commanded. Unlike the much vaunted read on in Tebe, this is not meant to be a secret mission. The operatives here are not meant to be covert, and they are not meant to be in disguise or unseen. We are asked to be the people who carry out this mission. Now it's called a co-mission because we're not doing it alone. We're doing it with Jesus himself. So throughout the world there are churches, there are people dedicated to the churches such as the priests, the nuns, deacons, etc. And they are the lay faithful. During this time of the pandemic, in several corners of the world, people can't go to any house of worship. And on this day in particular, we in the church draw to mind Father, Son, Spirit. Today in the Western Church is what is known as Trinity Sunday. And the Christian is not to be ambiguous or doubtful or not sure or keep secret the fact that God has a name singular and his name is Father, Son, Spirit. The Trinity is not something that can be defended 
logically. So when we go out on mission to proclaim this good news and people ask us about the Father, Son, Spirit, we have to be humble enough to say that we ourselves who believe can't explain it. So when they say, or when Jesus says, go and make disciples from all nations. St. Francis of Assisi is said to have said that preach, 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 and only when necessary use words. There are those who doubt whether he said this or not, because at some point in time, preaching is going to require the opening of the mouth and the saying of the word Jesus. But let us assume St. Francis of Assisi said this remark. We can infer what he means. We will do most of our preaching by our actions because there is such a thing as a disconnect between your speech and for lack of a better with the energy that your body is radiating. So a person can say that he feels happy or sad and his whole demeanor shows quite the opposite. In the event that our words and our demeanor are not on the same page, people will watch our demeanor. At least nine out of ten times they will watch our demeanor. So, our saying the word Jesus and explaining who Jesus is, is incomplete if it is not accompanied by a genuine spirit of, and tell me if this sounds familiar, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. These are all the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And the ideal scenario is that we talk Jesus and we exhibit these things. Because even if we don't get to say the word Jesus and people of goodwill are observing us at a distance and they witness and they see within us love, joy, peace, etc., etc., they will be inclined, for lack of a better phrase, to want some of what we have. They will be inclined, should the moment arise, to converse and ask the question, why is it you always seem to be so happy-go-lucky? Or why it is you always you know, are gentle with people? And why it is I've never heard you X, Y, Z? So saying the word Jesus, an actor, we can pay actors to, to, to talk about Jesus, but you can't fake whether you believe something or not. You can mislead me into thinking that you believe it. And remember, there are always people of all faiths, all walks of life looking for the truth. They genuinely want to know what is the truth. So that point is that there must be an authentic marriage between how we actually are and what we say. Now baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Baptism speaks to the sacramental life of the church. There are those who say, look, I just need the Bible. I don't need the church. And I won't split hairs about the word need. So let's replace the word need with, hmm, I'll have to use more than one word, would like to partake in. Would you like to partake in the holy meal? Would you like to partake in the removal of the weight of your sins? Would you like to partake in becoming a member of the body of Christ? And that is far more inviting. And the answer to all of these is yes, I would. Now, again, for some of us, where we are, church and its sacraments are not available. And I, we are not to feel any way about that. Jesus is with us now. But what we have to understand is that Jesus himself instituted the church and these sacraments, and they're there for us. They're there for us. And it's nice, it's good to partake in the sacraments. It shouldn't be seen as anything that 
is going to weigh you down. On the contrary, it will lighten your spirit, it will lighten your mood. And in the meantime, while we can't, we do, we, we pray, we understand that God is with us all the time. Make disciples of all nations. A disciple is both a student and one with discipline. And I can't make what I am not. So I would do myself a tremendous favor to be a student of the word, to read it, ask questions, do research. But what is a student if he has no teacher? And I must always remind myself, the teacher in this thing is Jesus. And when I make my disciples, I must let them know that I am not the final authority he is. Teach them to fulfill all I have commanded you. What is it he commanded us? He commanded us to love God first, love your neighbor as yourself, but differently. Love yourself as Jesus loves you. I prefer that version because it starts off with God and it ends off with Jesus, who is also God. It all comes down to God. Remember, you are always loved. That there are times that don't seem like that is true. You are to see them as mirages. You are to see them as misleading. You are to see them as not true. Faith is supposed to ground you enough to know that at any point in time, his gaze is upon you, he loves you, and he wants to, tell me if it sounds familiar, wash your feet, lead you and feed you, take you under his gentle yoke so that you experience this burden that is light. So let us pray for the grace to step aside and let God do his miracles. God, we don't want to do miracles. We step aside so you can do them. We want you to do the miracles. We just know things will work out, and it is lovely not to have to study what happens next. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Our Lady of Good Counsel, pray for us.